Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the UFLEX Limited Q1 FY24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Dollars Capital. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now want the conference over to Mr. Sachin Bobadi from Dollars Capital. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Lizan. Uh, on behalf of Dollars Capital, I welcome you all to the Q1 FY24 earnings conference call of Inflex Limited. Hope you all and your family members are staying safe and healthy. From the management side, we have with us uh, Mr. Rajesh Bhatia, Group President, uh, Finance and Accounts and Chief Financial Officer. Mr. Anantashree Chaturvedi, uh, Vice Chairman, Flex Films International. Mr. Apurvashri uh, Chaturvedi, Director, EU Operations and Sustainability, Uflex Group. And Mr. Surjit Pal, Vice President, Investor Relations. Now I hand the floor to the management for their opening remark, and then we would have question and answer session. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Uh, and we welcome you all to Q1 FY24 earnings call of UFLEX. Uh, I'll start with the positives, and the positives for the uh, quarter or, uh, you know, that this quarter we witnessed uh, highest ever packaging films volumes from our, uh, from our India operations. Uh, we witnessed highest ever aseptic revenue in a, in a quarter. Uh, we witnessed the highest ever export revenues uh, in a quarter of about 400 uh, crores. And uh, we, even from the aseptic packaging business, the export, uh, you know, uh, revenues are now touching close to about 200 crores per, per quarter. And uh, uh, the best is that you know while uh, the packaging films business has been has been a bit sluggish, uh, you know, a couple of months after the onset of the Russia Ukraine uh, conflict. Uh, but uh, in terms of this quarter, what we can say is that you know we've not seen any uh, uh, any deterioration in volumes uh, in terms of. Uh, in terms of the packaging films, especially the pet, and overall basis, we've maintained a positive sales volume of on a quarter to quarter basis by about half a percent or so. Uh, the other value added films, also like holographic films, also we've seen a 28% YOY increase in volumes. And the uh, Dharwar project, which we commissioned uh, on 31st of March, has helped us to achieve uh, uh, about a 77% capacity utilization uh, from that uh, plant, and which has given us about 22% volume increase in the packaging films business uh, in, in India. Uh, overall, for the quarter, when we see the beta margins, though on a standalone basis, are uh, at about 12.3%. 12, 12 uh, this quarter, there has been some normal uh, foreign exchange fluctuation losses also to the extent of about 18 crores. So if we negate that, in fact, then the standalone uh, beta margin stands at about 13.5%. Uh, the consolidated mar EBITDA margin stands at 9.3%, which, you know, when we compare with the peers, uh, we appear, uh, you know, th that seems uh, much better than uh, the most of them. And I've seen the numbers uh, from about 4.5% to 9% uh, range. Uh, so overall, uh, you know, which... Uh, shows that the packaging films business still continue to be sluggish given that what's happened in Europe, uh, what's happening in America in terms of the sustained increase in the interest rates, uh, uh, inflation which has uh, impacted the consumption. Uh, but still, if you if you see our pack for the our America business, we've still achieved 
a volume uh, you know of for the capacity utilization of our america plant is 100% the capacity utilization of our mexico plant is about 87% uh we've seen a dip in the capacity utilization in in so what we are what we are uh we are still keeping those uh, plants at the full capacity but you know we we getting impacted uh, you know at a margin level while in the in 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 the european plants the capacity utilization levels have been impacted because of uh, consumption uh being uh impacted due to uh higher energy prices and the higher mortgage payments which the consumer have to uh, the customers have to do uh driven by the increased uh, interest rates across all the mortgages uh and you know again this quarter we been also impacted very uh, hugely by uh in the third week of june we had the central bank of nigeria uh when the new government took took over in nigeria in the month of march and thereafter uh you know we seen this one major policy uh change where the central bank of nigeria which was you know sort of keeping a peg on the dollar uh, naira parity has now uh, you know sort of linked it to the market demand and supply situation uh which led to about 62% uh, devaluation of the naira currency with a with us dollar and we've seen the huge impact of that in this quarter it's about 382 crores in this quarter when the currency has moved from about 460 naira to a dollar to about 750 naira uh, to a dollar and uh, that Uh, explains us this exceptional item because our borrowings there uh, are in dollar and uh, uh, that is that is impacting that has impacted uh, uh, you know the profitability at the bottom line and we have reported a net loss of about 416 crores uh, in in this quarter uh you know the aseptic business though it has done better uh, it has done well but you know we we still uh, miss the momentum uh, you know because of an early onset of the monsoon in the country this year which means that you know the the beverage consumption uh, gets affected when you have uh, you know when the summer is shortened and uh, uh, you know otherwise we could have we could have done still better in in uh, in that business uh, we had a told uh, you know that we are expanding the capacity by de bottlenecking the plant to about from an existing 7 billion packs to about 12 billion packs uh, which will be operational in the next fiscal and uh, we have now quite a good hold on the domestic as well as the international markets in that and our team strongly believes that as and when uh, this capacity is available as it was the last time when the capacity got increased from 3.5 3.5 billion packs to 7 billion packs uh, they are performing they are producing much more than that uh, this quarter also the capacity utilization of the plant was about close to about 120% and uh, keeping that momentum i think the team is quite confident that you know as and when the revised uh, uh, enhanced capacity is available they they going to uh, you know sort of market all of that uh, uh, in a, in a very short span of time so there are positives there are positives on the aseptic packaging there are positives on the uh flexible packaging including the holographic films business which as i said that has seen about a 28% yoy increase in the in the volumes and the revenues and uh once this business uh, packaging film business stabilizes uh you know i think we 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 will see much better level of profitability uh with the with the much higher operation uh operational level from our aseptic plant as well as our uh you know flexible packaging uh, business 
on the capex part uh, the two projects uh, backward integration where we will we be going to uh, you know manufacture our own raw material for our pet fills uh, one based in panipat which is likely to be operational by the end of this fiscal and another one in uh, egypt uh, which will uh also become operational in about 6 to 8 months time after we operationalize the panipat plant uh which would you know sort of given uh, given the level of the capacities that we have globally and being number 2 in the industry i think that will give us enough uh, you know sort of cushioning uh against uh, any shortages against any uh unforeseen price increases um, i i can now share with you that you know during the covid period during the tough times while availability was an issue uh in in european business we have almost paid three and a half times of our normal prices our add on prices for uh the pet chips uh you know during this covid period as compared to what we were what we were paying earlier so we did uh, it did impact our margins during that covid period and uh, given uh, that you know we now run huge capacity and the entire competition has already uh, you know uh, the uh, had already set up these these plants uh, you know pet chips manufacturing along with their along with their pet lines we were the only exception uh, and we were continuing to buy uh, buy uh, from the market uh, but yes we suffered uh, quite extensively during the covid period both from an availability as well as from a pricing perspective and now that you know they they'll be getting commission in the current fiscal i think uh, that and business risk also is now taken care of on the bopt side uh, you know the entire industry uh, depends on the outsourced raw material and so will we uh, continue to do that uh, and uh, uh, but from a pet perspective uh, i think we'll be we'll be even far better than the competition because you know what we have is one single large facility where we also have the uh you know flexibility of making the bottle grade chips which again continue to have a great momentum and or we can make the pet chips for for the uh for the for the packaging uh, film so we have that uh, flexibility uh, kept uh, while you know as i as i was saying that you know this is Uh, the minimum economic size of the facility that we are setting up in panipat as well as in egypt is going to be much more uh, you know efficient and cost effective as compared to the competition because we going to produce in one at one single uh, source large capacity and uh, you know while the the practice has been that you know for each bopet line uh you know uh, you set up an equivalent pet chips manufacturing capability as and when you 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 uh, you set up a, a line so that in nutshell uh, you know sort of uh, explains the debt levels uh, for the current quarter are almost the same as what we had in the in the previous quarter so there is no further debt addition and the net debt at about 4400 crore is uh almost the same what we what we had reported in the in the last quarter which means that they have been repayments and they have been fresh that taken to fund uh panipat and the uh, egyptian uh, backward integration uh, projects uh i think that uh is is what i had to say about our performance during this quarter and uh, uh over to over to you for the for any questions that you may have and we will be happy we will be glad to answer them thank you ladies and gentlemen we will now begin with the question and answer session anyone wishing to ask a question 
May I please press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Chirak Singhal from First Water Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Just a couple of questions from mine. Uh, firstly, I wanted to understand uh, on the uh, FX losses that we have booked during the quarter. So, apart from the exceptional item that we have shown, are there any other uh, FX losses? Actually, uh, your voice is cracking. Can you just repeat your question, please? Uh, an audible now? There's some disturbance and so. Audible now? Yeah, better. Yeah. I'm saying that uh, apart from the forex losses that we have shown in the exceptional item, are there any other forex losses that we have booked during the quarter? Yeah, I said that during the quarter there are normal currency fluctuations of uh, about 18 crore, uh, which are taken at uh, at uh, at EBITDA level itself. Okay, so 382 crores, uh, the exceptional item that you have shown, and another 18 crores. Uh, uh, which might be part of the other expenses. Nothing apart from these two items. No, these are the two ones on the forex side. Okay, so uh, except Nigeria and Egypt, uh, are there any other regions where there is a weaker currency and uh, we can see some sort of forex losses going forward? I think Egyptian currency continues to weaken every quarter. So the Mexican currency has appreciated in this quarter and... Uh, uh, we all others are are sort of minor negative or positive, so that's not so. The, so the uh, other than uh, other than Nigeria, the second biggest negative is about uh, is uh, Egypt still in this quarter as well. But now because it is the market driven, it is not pursuant to any policy changes by the government which has uh, impacted the parity of the exchange rate. So those are being reported as uh, as a normal expense item and not as an exceptional item. So on a net basis, would it be possible to, uh, you know, uh, share that what is the uh, net hedge uh, that we have in Egypt as well as Nigeria? Because I think we have taken some local currency loans. And then we would be having a mix of local procurement as well as, uh, uh, you know, uh, imports. And same on the sales side, we'll have the local sales as well as exports. So on a net basis, uh, is it possible to quantify uh, the net hedge position uh, in both the regions? No, see, uh, the Egyptian, so it's, uh, you know, it does not work that way when, when you are talking of uh, uh, forex impacts because of the devaluation. So on the balance sheet date, if you have dollar loans, so they will all get converted into uh, a much higher Egyptian pound if the local currency has devalued. Or if you have the receivables, so they will also get, get impacted by the currency devaluation. And then during the period, the operating expenses, you, uh, you know, convert from Egyptian currency or the other functional currency of that country into Indian rupees at an average rates for the for the uh, for the quarter because you know those are the transactions of the sales and purchase which you do constantly throughout the quarter so they are not impacted by the exchange rate as on the 30th of June or 31st of March at the end of the quarter or the year uh, they get constantly uh, evaluated based on the exchange rate, average exchange rate during the quarterly or the or the yearly period. So it's very difficult to uh, you know tell you as to on each which day what is the total impact. But uh, the overall picture is that during the quarter you still have suffered a negative impact in Egypt. Uh, and which is offset by a positive impact that you had in uh, uh, some of the other currencies, including Mexico. So on an overall basis, the 
you know, the normal currency fluctuations have resulted in about an 18 crore loss in this quarter as well, while the Egypt, uh, while the Naira loss, uh, you know, Nigerian currency loss is, uh, is, is an exceptional item because that's pursuant to a policy of the, of the government of Nigeria. Understood. Got it. Uh, so, uh, my next uh, question is on the ESEPTO business. So, uh, 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 you know, firstly, what is the volume target for this year uh, with the 7 billion pack capacity? Are you expecting like 100% uh, utilization uh, based on the order book visibility and, uh, you know, for, for the current fiscal? So, the uh, first quarter, we've seen about 120%. Uh, let's see, uh, you know, the... Uh, the uh, you know, the Jan, Feb, March again will be high quarters uh, because that's where the the season sets in. But in between, uh, you know, uh, from uh, August to uh, December, it's normally a lean period for the business uh, in India. Uh, but as we said that, you know, as, as we speak, we have been able to achieve about, uh, in a lean month, about 50 to 60 percent, uh, you know, being contributed by the exports. So I think as we go forward, uh, the exports will hold the key to how this business volumes, uh, uh, business volumes are compensated. Because India, we will definitely see a decline from August till December, and those volumes will have to be substituted uh, from the exports, which which is looking, uh, you know, achievable uh, at this moment. So an overall basis against the capacity of, say, 7 million tax, if we are able to do about uh, 8 billion tax a year. Uh, earlier, uh, if the season would have gone better in, in the, from, uh, from, you know, especially from April to July, I think we would have, we would have uh, had another, uh, we would have seen about eight and a half to uh, quarter to nine billion tax uh, this this year itself. And post this bottlenecking, you would be uh, able to uh, do twelve billion tax, right? Uh, you'd be able to do hundred percent at the peak capacity utilization yes. once you are done with the bottlenecking. Yes. So, any specific reason why uh, this is taking uh, long? Uh, the timeline that you mentioned is by April 2024. So, are we waiting for some balancing equipment or uh, exactly uh, what is the reason behind, uh, you know, uh, uh, this uh, long period for uh, the deep water lacking? So, that's the delivery time taken by the equipment supplier for the delivery. Okay. Uh, so, what will be the capex uh, for this uh, deep water lacking? I think uh, uh, there, this capex is in two parts. One is, you know, this machine, uh, you know, these equipments itself, that's number one, which should be about 50 to 60 CR. And then because the capacity is now from 7 to uh, 12, uh, we'll have to build some more storage for the raw material as well as for the finished products. So that will be another uh, 40 to 50 crores. So total 100 crores of CAPEX, uh, which will be spending this year for the deep bottleneck. Yes. Right. And how much time are you expecting uh, to ramp this to 12 billion packs? I think we we are targeting uh, next physical. If we are able to do it from January, that will be a, a, a huge moment, a bonus because, you know, that's where the season uh, commences uh, in India. Uh, I think, but, you know, keeping a conservative number, I think we we, we should uh, look at something in April itself. So, you are saying in FY25, uh, we should be close to 100% of the uh, capacity utilization? Uh, so that's what you are saying. Our target is, and, uh, but let's see, because as I said that, you know, when we expanded from 7, uh, from 3.5, uh, so currently we are operating at 8, and from 8 to 12, that's what the, our team is showing huge confidence in terms of achieving that number. Uh, we were fortunate that, you know, there was no lag when we expanded the capacity last time. So April 23, when we, when we got this, uh, three and a half to seven billion packs, you know, we were, 
you know, April 22, sorry, we, we, we were already, uh, uh, you know, have the enough order book to, to, to ensure that, uh, you know, that we achieve the very high capacity utilization in, in this uh, plant. And hopefully, you know, we will, we will uh, surprise the markets by, by saying so again. Okay, okay. Got it. Uh, so now Ethepto is going to be, uh, you know, a material contribution uh, to your standalone business. So, uh, uh, you know, I mean, from an investor perspective, it would be great if you can uh, have Ethepto as a separate segment. So are you thinking something on those lines going forward from the reporting uh, point of view? I, because it's all packaging. So are you saying that we merge or are you saying report separate numbers for Ethepto? Reporting separate numbers for Ethepto. I think we we give that indication each time on the call and otherwise that, you know, a septo business, we are looking at uh, margin in high teams. Uh, so that's the, uh, we, we tell you that, but, you know, beyond that, uh, at this moment, we are not looking at having a septo because, you know, it's not that the numbers are becoming higher. So that's why you should be, you should report a septo as a separate business. Acepto also uses a part of the same raw materials what the flexibles use. So it's all part of one, uh, you know, the packaging activity as such. Uh, but on the call, we do share with you that the margin profile in the Acepto is, is much higher as compared to the uh, flexible packaging. And I think we'll maintain that as of now, there's no plan to, you know, have a separate, uh, uh, you know, uh, segment reporting for the septo business. So in the past, you have given a margin guidance of close to 20%. So uh, uh, is that that I should be working. Okay. Yeah, right. okay. 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 Uh, so coming to the next part, uh, uh, you know, on the spreads. So for the current quarter, uh, how are you seeing the trend of the spreads? Is it better than the last quarter? Uh, and if you can answer separately for Bopet and BOBE. And also, how many lines are you expecting uh, in each Bopet and UP for the current year as well as next year? So, this year there are no, uh, we will have a couple of more lines for the pet uh, coming up, uh, you know, by the end of this physical or I don't know, looking at the market today, if, they will, if the competition wants to delay that. Uh, but there are about two uh, plants which are, which are likely to hit. And thereafter, there is a, for the next three years, we don't see anything coming up in the pet business because there's nothing in the pipeline. Uh, uh, on the BOPP side, uh, there's nothing in this year, there's nothing in the next year, but a year later, there may be a couple of plants which will, which will come for operation. So this is only for India, and globally, are you expecting any new lines for this year and next year? Uh, globally, you know, uh, it's not been a mad game like, you know, the way it has been in India. The capacity build-up has been rational only. Uh, but fortunately, because the demand uh, got impacted, that's why we've seen a much lower, uh, you know, volume there, especially in, in Europe. I'm, I told you that uh, even from America plant, we still achieved the 100% capacity utilization in this quarter also and a higher level of capacity utilization even from the Mexican facilities. But uh, Europe uh, is, is what is struggling to, uh, to push the volumes. So basically the next two years uh, in India are expecting only two lines in BOPAT and nothing in BOPP uh, till FY25. Uh, so based on, you know, some channel checks and all, uh, what I found is that uh, uh, there are some new players uh, for the first time who entered the packaging film business and, uh, uh, you know, uh, they are uh, suffering because of the uh, spreads that are prevailing right now. So have you seen any shutdowns or delays uh, in the, uh, you know, capacities that were supposed to come up, let's say, last year or maybe current year? Have there been any delays or, uh, let's say, permanent shutdown of, of those lines? So there has been no permanent shutdown. Uh... You know, obviously, uh, people may not be uh, operating their plants at the full efficiencies, looking at the demand and supply situation. Uh, 
but you know the the delay of any new commissioning is is clearly evident and that is inevitable as well so you know we may see uh, you know a uh, six months kind of a delay from the people who are uh, today in the process of commissioning their facilities so that's what uh, uh, but clearly uh, if if one particular facility can can produce about uh, let's say the new plant and produce about 45 48000 tons a year so clearly we will see that you know those plants not being run uh, fully got it okay uh, and uh, on the tharwad facility you mentioned that you are running at 77% utilization uh, so uh, any timeline uh, how much it will take to ramp it up to 100% for tharwad as well as you know the both the cpp line that we have set up uh, one in darwad and uh, one in dubai also uh, so, uh, 77% capacity utilization in the first quarter is quite uh, an achievement i would say given the current market situation and given that it's a new market for us we've been predominantly predominantly we been uh, a north market uh, north india market player and uh, here we are uh, you know new to that uh, southern market a uh, 77% capacity utilization level seems quite decent uh, i think once the six months time once the demand supply situation improves a bit because as i said that india is able to absorb one and a half to two plants each year given its uh, you know increased consumption each year and Uh, so uh, you know we've already seen a struggle of uh, sluggishness of about 6 to 7 months in this or maybe close to about a year now in this so another 6 months i think the levels should definitely improve or even if the volumes do not improve initially the the margins will improve for sure okay okay so uh, this uh, uh, trend for the spreads uh, in the current quarter how is it uh, looking like uh, vis a vis the last quarter this quarter uh, should be better and but uh, you know we've only seen about uh, we have only as of now the management accounts for the month of july only so but i think uh, they will be better than what we had in the last quarter uh, both india as well as globally okay uh, also in your press release i think you mentioned about uh, you know revisiting the listing of the overseas business in us so uh, uh, any timelines on the same i think that's all market dependent and you know uh, if the markets would have supported us we had a huge momentum on that and uh, our uh, investment bankers were almost ready to uh, to file the Uh, you know the prospectors and all that but then the market stumbled so now it all depends on the markets uh, as to you know the ipo markets in the uh, uh, in the us how do they how do they come back so we keeping a close watch we keep on interacting with our investment bankers and uh, obviously that's uh, that's on our agenda because you know that will uh, you know hugely change the way Uh, the company is valued today because when we were talking to based on the guidance what we had from our investment banks i think it was nowhere close to the current valuations of the u flex that you see in india it was much 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 higher i i can't share the numbers but uh, definitely you know those markets uh, were pricing at us in a much different way So based on the let's say the previous M&A activity and uh, you know the uh, similar peers who are listed in US, uh, what is the target uh, if we put the multiple that you would be seeing uh, once this business gets listed? See, when we were looking at the markets at that point in time, so there were players who were so the range was between eight to twelve. now depending on the market how the buy end is market you would have found a, uh, you know a middle ground uh, for that 
so obviously which means that you know given the what are the levels here versus the the valuations that you see over there i think it's it's a different number but you know having said that uh that was the time when the earnings were also uh, you know sort of uh, very very uh, quite high uh, the earnings have also taken the dip especially in the international markets so you know uh, when the pricing power comes back and the earnings come back with the higher capacities that we set up internationally in the last 3 4 years i think that will be the right time to again look at down going to the markets again you know? So you are saying minimum ATX multiple for the peak. Sure, sure, I'll get back in the queue. I'll get back. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ask a question, you may please press star in one. The next question is in the line of Kaushik Pudar from KB Capital Markets Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, as for the margin, you just said that for the Indian operation, um, it is around thirteen and a half percent because of the problems outside it has come down to 9% uh, overall right uh, yes. uh, in normal times we used to have something like 17 to 19% margin so when you see us uh, see the company uh, getting to that kind of margin level i think we are as keen to get back to those levels as you are uh i think going back to i think the first target should be first to go back to on a combined basis to anywhere between you know 12 to 13% range first so that, that should be the happen right? uh because as of now the india and overseas business put together this quarter has been about 9.3% mm. uh i think if we if we first target 12 to 13 and then uh, you know look at consolidating from there that will be the right approach so in about a year's time i think uh, uh you know or uh, in the q4 of this year on a run rate basis if we can achieve that i think that will be good but because because for the for the overall year for it to become 12 to 13 uh, you will need a much higher number in the later quarters to to come to uh, an annual level of about 12 to 13 so in q4 if we can do about uh, 12 to 13 range I think that will set the tone for the FY25 then. Okay, and uh, this over capacity that this uh, industry is witnessing will how when will that that get get over? So India is the over capacity situation, and as I said, that India can take care of about two new plants each year uh, without disturbing the market. So I think India should correct itself in about six months time. uh but it won't go back to those dizzy highs what we've seen in 2021 i think there will be more rational uh pricing uh this time uh and the capacity expansion would also be more rational because you know we in 2021 22 we were at a level where the payback periods for the setting up the new facilities had come down quite considerably and that led to increased capacity by the existing players as well as the new players got in there uh but uh, you know i think and that's what happens that you know when the when the business is high the momentum is high you know people look to replicate the you know success of a particular uh, industry that's very normal because you know normally the capital is the last constraint that you have uh for for following up for for uh, following a successful investment so uh but uh i think we can uh, we can easily look at uh in about 6 months time uh the india should look at a much higher uh you know margins as compared to what they are in q1 okay and as to the world i mean uh, you are outside india market world i think uh, the first the volumes have to come up europe still continues to be uh, you know uh, a drag and us is doing far 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 better uh, you know and uh, the pricing power should also as i said that by q4 if we can look at about uh, 12 to 13% uh, you know a bit of margin range uh that's what we are also uh, we we also hope for
And my last question, you just pointed out about the listing of the U.S. in U.S. Is it the U.S. subsidiary or something else uh, for listing in U.S.? So we were looking to list our Dubai holding company, which actually holds the whole business. Okay. Uh, whole whole uh, uh, other than India business, right? Or, or hello? Yes, other than India business. Okay. 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 So that you wanted wanted to list. Okay. 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 Thank you. I think my questions have been answered. The next person can take over. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Esha Prasad from VSJ FinCap. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Good evening, sir. My question is that as compared to the previous quarter, we can see that at least that the top line has reduced. Uh, is there a, a pricing pressure in terms of in, due to some competition or is it the impact uh, from outside India business or is it the India business which has brought the top line uh, uh, reduced it as compared to the uh, previous quarter? So, uh, the two things here. One, you know, we've seen the, uh, we, we've seen our overall sales volume going down by uh, about 7.5% on a year-on-year -year basis. So, as compared to uh, June 22 and June 23, we've seen about a 7.5% dip in the sales volume. Uh, but the uh, but the revenue dip is about 19 percent, and the difference is best explained as that you know the raw material prices uh, have also corrected. So it's a combination of seven and a half percent volume dip plus uh, some margin dip. And uh, a very, to a very large extent, the raw material price dip, which has uh, led to the uh, revenue being down by 19% on a year-on-year -year basis. Okay. Uh, so another question is that how much impact, uh, how much time will it take for the uh, new uh, capital uh, expenditure which you are doing on your plants to increase the capacity? Uh, will it be seen in the next two to three quarters, or how long do you see it happening? No, which capex? There is no further capex. The, any, uh, the, the Panipat plant, uh, which you are, uh, or is it uh, is producing currently? So, so the Panipat plant, to the extent we are going to consume that uh, raw material within our own plants, is not going to be a top line accretive. It will be a margin accretive considering. Uh, that your cost versus the market outsourcing that margin you will retain. Uh, but to the extent you are not selling in the in the markets, it will not be a revenue a critic from you, uh, for us because we're going to consume that material uh, in house in our in our plants. Uh, but we expect this plant to uh, get. Uh, started by end of this physical. Okay. Uh, sir, what challenges do you perceive in this packaging sector uh, uh, for the next uh, two to three quarters, which can impact the business? We've seen, uh, you know, last couple of years uh, that this dollar issue, you know, the consistent increase in the interest rates in U.S., Europe, and all that is actually starving a lot of economies for, from, uh, you know, uh, with the dollars. And that is actually, you know, sort of uh, has set in uh, a sort of uh, uh, huge depreciation of their currencies. We saw Egypt last year. We are now seeing Nigeria this year. Uh, Mexican currency last year also devalued good that it, it got uh, better this quarter. Uh, but this is the main thing that, you know, what we are seeing because the dollar availability in some of the developing economies is remains to be a concern. So it's, it's becoming a challenge uh, both from your procurement of the raw material prices because you know, if you don't have the dollar availability, that limits your uh, sourcing of the commodities from the international markets also. And that's been our main strength that, you know, given that we are a global player. So we can source our raw materials from any which country from where we 
we uh, think that you know it it is more uh, cost beneficial to us. So I think Egypt and Nigeria both have been huge uh, uh, hits in terms of the currency depreciation, and that's where last year also we had FY23 also uh, we substantial losses both which affected the. Uh, you know, above a beta level and then as an exceptional item because Egypt devalued its currency twice. Uh, so Egypt has almost devalued by about 100% in the last one year or so. And now we've seen Naira uh, depreciating by about 62%. Uh, I hope that, you know, uh, the dollar uh, interest rates going up get settled soon because that will then I uh, mean, increased flow of the dollars to these economies, which will, you know, sort of uh, calm their currencies. And that's what uh, seems to be a big challenge as of now. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Rajiv Arora from RS Leasing Consultants. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening. Thanks for taking my question. First of all, uh, I'm sorry I joined a bit late. I just wanted to know whether there is any change in update from the last quarter with regard to, I mean, with our communication with the CBC. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Arora. Your audio is breaking up. Has, uh, has there been any uh, uh, change? Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Arora. Okay. Uh, we are unable to um, hear you clearly. The next question. Hello. Mr. Rajiv Adora, we are unable to hear you. Ladies and gentlemen, we seem to have lost the audio from the current participant. We'll move on to the next. That is from the line of Chirak Singhal from First Water Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the follow-up. Uh, so what is the APEX uh, for the current year and, and next year? Mm, I think we need to now to balance that needs to be spent on the plants in India is about uh, maybe 150 odd crores and uh, in uh, in Egypt uh, it should be about close to about 60 million dollars still because that plant was started much much later so that plant is costing us about 71 million dollars so I think uh, $60 million there, which will be spread over this fiscal as well as part of the next fiscal, but India CapEx would happen uh, within this year. And uh, and uh, the bottlenecking of uh, uh, Acepto business will also get completed in this fiscal. Okay, so 150 crores and 100 crores uh, will be this year, plus some portion of the Egypt expansion. So you're talking about the pet chips facility, right? At basic uh, Egypt location. Yeah, pet chips facility. Right. Okay. Uh, I also wanted to ask you on the effect expansion plans because uh, you know uh, you mentioned that you're quite confident that the company should ramp up to 12 billion packs uh, once we start the, uh, once once we're done with the de bottlenecking. So uh, uh, you know where are we planning to expand next, uh, uh, and and what are the timelines? Uh, for the next uh, phase of growth uh, for the sector? There is nothing uh, on the anvil right now. So I think that call will have to be taken depending on how fast the extended capacity to 12 billion tax is uh, is utilized. Okay, understood. Uh, and that's it for mine. Just one more thing. Uh, I think the subsidiary financials uh, are not uploaded yet on the website. This can please upload the uh, FI23 uh, subsidiary annual reports. Okay, we 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 we'll look at that. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants: anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star and one. Participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star 1.
A reminder to the participants in the conference, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and one. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments. I think uh, thanks everybody for being on the call call today. And to that extent, you know, we tried our best to give you, uh, you know, to answer all your uh, questions, all your, uh, you know, queries about about the performance in this quarter and the guidance as to on the capex and uh, and the business outlook for the for this year and and the next year. Uh, we hope to remain in touch with you and keep on updating you on on what's happening in the uh, industry. And uh, I can only say that you know because we are diversified, so you know that gives us an leverage over the competition uh, to to still build momentum in in the business and uh, the packaging films business, uh, which is currently uh, uh, seeing a sluggishness both in India as well as export markets. India, the volumes are not not impacted, uh, but, you know, the, the demand supply is clearly uh, impacting the margins in the business, and overseas it is impacted by the volume drop. Uh, so, uh, you know, the target is, and all the, uh, you know, the sales people, uh, the entire team is now working much harder in terms of regain their, uh, you know, the, the, their, their volumes in those markets. And once the volumes are regained, I think the pricing power will also, you know, sort of come back. That's what we are hoping for. We are, uh, we were seeing, uh, you know, the whole team is working very hard, including, uh, you know, Mr. Anand Shri Chaturvedi, Ms. Apur Shri Chaturvedi, who are handling the European uh, Middle East and uh, and the American territories respectively. So I think we uh, we we sure that you know, given our leadership position uh, in the industry, uh, we shall be in a position to uh, you know sort of set the things right. Uh, in in the packaging films business uh, in a, in, a, in a, within this fiscal that's what uh, you know we we are hoping for and uh, we'll continue to build momentum in our other businesses which uh, have borne uh, which have shown tremendous resilience during during the period the packaging film business is, was a bit sluggish. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, uh, everybody on the call, and uh, we hope to remain in touch. We'll surely be. Thank you. Thank you, members of the management team. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Dollars Capital, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you.